Hi guys, today I'm making books. Uh, this is a follow-up to having made some bookshelves for my dolls using these crisscross drawer dividers that came with a craft storage system and I was not using these for drawer dividers so I made a bookshelf out of them. I haven't actually glued them together yet which actually is kind of nice because it means I can take it all apart and store it in just this much space um, because I, I don't have an actual doll house or shelves where I store my dolls. I just have a photography setup area and so it might be a bedroom one day or outdoors another day or just a random bland set um, another day. So I'm going to insert a picture of what this shelf looks right now. And so I really need to put some books on my shelves. So I went to this website, let me grab my iPad. I think I searched for um, doll, doll book printables or something like that. And one of the hits led me to this site, which is called resinmuse.com. That's the website right there. And she has this list of um, sheets that include the PDFs and GIFs. I'm going to open a PDF. I didn't even look at the GIFs. Um, that's what it looks like. So it's like these images that have been scanned or whatever uh, created of the front spine and back of a whole bunch of books. And she's got a whole bunch of them. So there are it says there are seven. It goes from sheet one to sheet seven and she has she has them in both GIF and PDFs. And um, I was only I was only looking at the PDFs and I was only able to find five unique ones. So the first couple are repeats of each other. Um, but I got a total of five eight and a half by eleven sheets of uh, book printables. Now these are made for larger dolls. They're made for sixteen inch dolls. It says right there, right there. Um, and she has this link to if you want them for smaller dolls, you can try these. And so that link brings you to this other page. It's called Printable Mini Books Tiny BJD Size. And uh, these ones come out smaller, but I couldn't figure out how to get them on my page so it wasn't cutting some of them off. So see how the top parts of these are cut off and the edges of these. I tried printing it this way and that way and it just, I didn't want to fuss with it. So what I did instead was I went to back to the bigger page that was made for the larger BJDs. So these are the six made for the 16 inch dolls. And I just printed them at 60% on pieces of cardstock. Now this is not a piece of cardstock. This was just my piece of paper I was using to figure out the sizing. It turns out that the 60% is the best size to use these printables um, with a pull-up size doll. So what I did was I ended up with a whole bunch of these. So I printed them on cardstock and they kind of looked like this in different variations. And then I just took my trimmer. I just took my Fiskars paper trimmer if you don't have one of these and you can get like a smaller version of one of these at the stationery store for like 10 bucks or so. So um, these are really easy to get but if you don't have one of these you could just easily just cut them up with your scissors. It'll just take a little bit longer. So I used my trimmer and when I printed all five, as I said I could only find five unique images in PDF form, um, I ended up with over 30 books so that's quite a lot. Um, and there's a whole variety. Some of them I recognize and some of them I don't. I think a lot of them are young adult literature books. So, um, so yeah, so I ended up with a whole bunch of these once I cut them out. This is what they look like. I didn't print them on the best quality because I did print them on better than draft and better than, I think I, I printed them on like the, I have six different options for printing and I think I printed it on the fourth or something, so towards the higher end of quality. So that's what they look like once they're all cut up. And some of them you'll notice are really long and that's because these must have been scanned of hardcover book, like the dust covers, which so these flaps would kind of fold inside of the um, cover of the book and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these off because I don't want to have too much bulk on the outside 
of my book, so I'm just gonna cut them off here and here. I just wanted to show you that, so I left it intact so I could show you. So after you've printed your book covers up onto your cardstock at 60% if you're using the larger sized printables, um, in order to get them folded like this, you can fold them by hand if you don't have a scoreboard. I, because I am a scrapbooker, I do have a scoreboard, so I will show you how to use that if you have one. Um, you just take this, this is a Martha Stewart scoreboard and it comes with a little scoring tool but it's kind of cheap plastic and it gets really sharp and it, it can cut your paper if you use it. So I just use a stylus but you know you could use the score thing that comes with your, that comes with your scoreboard if you have one. Um, so I'm just kind of lining up the where I see the edge of this book with this line here. And I'm using this line, this is just a line I drew myself onto my scoreboard to help me so I don't accidentally jump tracks in my scoreboard. So this is just a, um, a tool that has a whole bunch of grooves in it. That's all that it is. And so I'm going to score down here and then usually you can just kind of line it up based on the image and then it comes out to be folded like that. So when you score it there and score it there it folds quite nicely. So this makes a really nice crisp edge for your book. Um, if you had to fold it by hand, I would just it will just take a little bit longer, but it's totally doable if you don't have a scoreboard. So I did this with all kinds of books. <laughs> I printed up 30 and I have lots of space to fill on my bookshelf, so I have a whole bunch of these to make. And so, as you can see in my sample one, in my sample two, I have used plain computer paper as the inside pages and um, you can use plain computer paper which is fine. It doesn't look quite as realistic when the book is opened because obviously the pages are blank, right? Um, these are fine for just making books that you're going to put on your bookshelf and you're never going to open because you can't tell that the pages don't have writing on them. So these are great for just kind of having as props lined up on a shelf in the background of your dollhouse or your doll room. Um, but if you want your doll to be holding the book or looking like she's reading the book and the book might be opened, then you'll want to use lined or um, paper that has printing on it. And so what I did, because I didn't have any paper that had tiny little printing on it, I didn't want to put giant print on such a tiny book, what I did was I just opened a text document and cut and paste a couple paragraphs that I had on another document and I just kept decreasing the font until it was tiny, tiny, tiny. So that's what it looks like. Um, and it's you know, kind of in line with the book. I guess it would be a large print book, but it's, it's you know, better than having full size print. So I um, mine looks a little bit funny because I accidentally printed twice on the same side. I was trying to print them back to back, uh, but I did eventually get them back to back and I don't want to waste the paper. So I'm just going to use it like that because it doesn't really matter as long as the pages don't look so blank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tr go to my trimmer and I'm going to trim this down and then I'll show you how I put the pages inside of the book. So I'm just going to take my trimmer here and take all five pages and cut them at the same time. Just going to cut off all of those margins so that all I have is paper that has words on it. Now all of the paper that I have is pretty heavily printed. It has words on all the different surfaces. So now I need to know how big I need to make these pages. So I'm going to start by measuring the um, height of this book. I've, I'm doing the Mockingjay. So I'm going to look at the height of it, which is... The height of it is just... I guess it's um, three and three quarters, I would say. So I'm going to make the height of my inside pages to be three and a half. So I'll have a little bit of a buffer on the top and the bottom so that the cover will be bigger than the pages. So that's what I'm going to start with is a three and a half centimeter height. So I just switched to my metric trimmer and cut that at three and a half centimeters so that the text was going the proper way. Then 
I'm going to measure the width of these pages. So the width is, I guess, probably two and a quarter, I would say. So, yeah, 2.2 .2 or 2.1 would be fine. So I'm going to get my, my trimmer back. And I'm just going to trim this paper to twice the width of the paper of the uh, book cover that I measured. And so um, at first I almost cut it the exact amount, but then I realized I have to double it. It's probably the right amount. So I think those pages are going to be good. I don't want to... Yeah, I think those are going to be the right size. So now I'm going to score them at the halfway mark. Like that. So now I have my first signature, and this one looks like it will probably take more than two. My other books took two signatures. And so what a signature is, is it's just a little um, bunch of pages that have been folded in half and connected to one another. It's kind of a bookmaking term. Actually, I'm going to make these super folded. I'm going to use my tiny stapler to attach them together. And there you go. I have my first signature. So now I'm going to make more signatures the exact same size until this book is filled up and I'll be right back. So I've just cut a couple more lengths of the uh, book paper and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with my next couple of signatures. I am just going to, you know, it's, it's really worthwhile to take the time to score it if you're able to and really flatten out the paper and burnish it and, uh, sorry, I have to refill <laughs> refill my stapler there um, and it just kind of makes sure that if you measure and take the time to score and fold everything properly that these books are going to look really nice and sharp as a final as a final prod product um, and, you know, I really think that it's worth that extra time. I had to cut one last signature there uh, so that I ended up with a total of four to go inside of this book. Okay, so I've made a total of four signatures for going inside the cover of this Mockingjay book, which I I just folded each one kind of with my folder. You could use anything that's kind of flat to do this with. So they're all very um, folded. Now I'm just going to use some double-sided tape. Sometimes it comes in a package that looks more like this. I have a big giant one and I'm going to stick them all together. And I want to stick them together so that they're all gonna line up fairly well. So I just speeded this part up so that uh, you could just see how I put this together. I actually came up with a different idea for adhesive that I'm going to share with you guys at the end that makes an even nicer finished product. Uh, but I did make this book this way and I left it this way. Um, I just put a bit of adhesive there right on the spine just to make sure. Um, and that's actually what made me change my mind, but you'll see that. Now I have a really cute Mockingjay book with real words inside. So my pull-up can sit and read a book. So I'm going to make a few more books with uh, words inside of them, but most of my books are just going to be using some recycled paper from uh, my trash bin because most of them aren't going to be opened. I'll just pick some of my favorite books to put uh, the worded paper inside. Here's another tip just for making your books even sturdier. You can use, instead of using 
uh, this kind of double-sided adhesive, or I've been using this because that's just my preference, uh, you could use this. It is called, um, it comes under a number of different lines. Sometimes it's called red line, sometimes it's called sticky strip, and sometimes it's called terrifically tacky tape, but it has this orange backing on it and it's super duper duper adhesive. And so I have run a line of it down the spine and I put four signatures in this book. I'm just doing the Hunger Games right now. And uh, I think that's gonna fill up my books and make them thicker. So this is what the Mockingjay looks like with, oh yeah, the Mockingjay had four. I thought I put three in that, but there's four. Uh, so yeah, four fills it up nicely. Uh, so I ran a piece of sticky strip here, a piece of sticky strip here and here, and I'm just gonna put another piece just to make it super stuck. Uh, so I'm gonna put two more pieces on, and this stuff you can't rip with your hand. You have to use scissors to apply it. And you just wanna, what they call burnish it, which means you just have to kind of rub your nail or rub something along it to make it fully adhered onto whatever it is you're sticking it on. In this case, it's the pages of my book. And that will make it easier to peel the orange backing off. And if you overestimate or underestimate the length, you just trim it off like that. I'm gonna burnish that last one. And now, I need to make sure that my font is going the right way, which doesn't really matter. I mean, nobody's going to be looking at it that closely, but I do want it to go the right way if I can. So now, you just peel the backing off of your sticky strip. You don't want it to stick too much to your hand because that will make it less sticky for your book. So there, now all the sticky sides are showing and I'm going to, oh, how am I gonna do this? I'm going to adhere the middle part first because that's probably the part that will be the most challenging. So I'm just going to line it up by eyeballing it there and eyeballing it on the bottom side. And then once it's definitely in a good place, I'm gonna give it a good rub close the front cover, close the back cover, give it another good rub. Again, this adhesive works with pressure, so you wanna definitely pressure it. Apply lots of pressure to all those surfaces that you just glued. And now this one is definitely not coming apart. It's not going anywhere. So um, if you want, it might be overkill to use this kind of adhesive, but if you're going to be really handling it a lot, if it's gonna you know, be in a pick fic that you're doing or you're gonna be taking lots of pictures using this book, then it's probably worthwhile to use a good adhesive to make sure that it doesn't come apart. Um, this is the one that I made using the regular adhesive, and you'll see that it is, it's not gonna fall apart or anything, but it's just, it's loose there, right? So when you crack open the book, it these signatures kind of loosen from the spine because it's just regular adhesive that I used, whereas that is not going to happen with this book. So, you know, if you wanna take a bit of extra time and make a really well-made book, then it's worth using a really strong adhesive. So. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm gonna do the whole trilogy here, and then the rest of the books that I'm going to make, I'm just gonna put white paper inside because they'll just be props on a bookshelf.